What is going on everybody? We are back here looking at some more deck lists. If you didn't watch the first two videos, it's just a little series that I am going on where I'm looking at some of the most meta decks here, looking at all the decks that topped in the English metagame as well as the JP metagame, and then going over some of those lists here on this YouTube video, but then we are going to be filling out this spreadsheet with all the cards here, with all the ratios that are played. Um, this spreadsheet is going to be linked for you all down in the pinned comment alongside the past two videos that we've done, as well as here we have 16 or 15 topping deck lists um, that we are going to be going over you can check all of them i'm not going to be going over all of them in the video but if you are curious at looking at all of them um, you can have this here or you can just look at this once we are done and at the end of the video i am going to be going over this and just talking about some of the things that stand out a little bit more than the rest but with that being said let's get on into the deck lists all right, here's the first list that we're going to be looking at. This was the one that placed the highest in the card market regional as far as Mastamon lists go. Starting off with the Digitama, we do have four Demi Marimon here. Now, this is going to be fairly consistent um, towards the end of it once we look at all of these. But the thing about the Mastamon list, as we're going to see when we go through some of these lists, is Mastamon is very easily the least solved deck that I've looked at in this metagame right now. These lists are everywhere. There are so many different choices in the rookies, the champions, the ultimates, the just everything at all parts of the deck are very different going around but the demi marimon is going to be fairly consistent now looking at the rookies we got the four tapirmon here which is nice it does give you a little bit of extra draw you can go ahead and swing in get a security check get a draw so it is nice aggression and recycle i don't know how i feel about tapirmon personally i think it's a fairly strong card and i can see why people are playing it but um, i do like things such as the floodgates like gazimon a little bit more but we are playing these here alongside the Labramon, which is also going to be giving us draw. So rookies are looking like mostly draw here. We are going to be having some Gazimons just because Gazimon is so powerful, but the main base here is going to be these draw rookies. Then looking at the champions, we are only playing five. The four Gatomon here, which is probably going to be staple in every single list. You really want to be playing this. It's kind of what makes the deck um, so good. So playing this at four is going to be standard. And then we're playing one black Gatomon here. I do think this is okay. Um, you can get enough memory with the reinforced memory boost and the purple memory boost to be able to just hard play this with Rush and go in for game. I don't know how much I like the retaliation as much. I'm sure it does have uses, but I like this more as a Rush Digimon more so than the uh, retaliation, but it is also just another purple yellow Digimon that you can Digivolve up on top of your rookies if you need to start building up into like Lady Devimon, for example. So I do like it. I do think that five champions is a little bit low since we are looking at 13 ultimates. Obviously, some of them you are looking to more hard play, like the Magna Angemons and the Lucimons are supposed to be coming out of the Mastamon and whatnot, but I still think that five is a little bit low, but considering that you're hard playing here um, and potentially hard playing here is going to be fine but now we got the four magnas i think four and three are going to be the most popular numbers here four is just going to be the most consistent it's a very strong card be able to play this for seven to be able to recover one and then later you can go gautamon into lady devimon for one and then be able to dna digivolve at the end and you'll be able to have the inheritable of the magna as well but mostly this is just a very strong card it's very expensive right now for a good reason for lady devimon again going to be some more cycle and just a strong level five that's going to work with gautamon um, while also having a nice inheritable that can work a little bit later to get rid of some rookies so i do like this here the three lucimon chaos mode i feel like is maybe a lot i was a big fan of two um in the testing but i guess if you like three it does work this was the one of the better placing lists so they did like it at three i personally like it at two but that's gonna have to be personal preference andrew woman here playing this at two now this is a card that has a lot of different ratios in these lists two three or four um, i think this is a strong card and i think two is going to be the most popular from what i've seen is playing this at two but this is a card that we're going to see in most of the lists, if not all the lists, just because it is fairly good with the on play. Um, being able to hard play this to be able to give sec minus two is going to be pretty nice because, yeah, like we said, four champions to 13 ultimates means that you need some ultimates that are going to give you value on the on play. Four Mastamon, um, I think you could get away with three. Some lists are probably playing three, but the four is probably going to be standard. You want to see this as much as possible. You want to be playing it multiple times per game. So I do like the Mastamon here. Um, I don't think there's really too much to say. It is a Mastamon deck. 
Two Zwart Defeats, again, there are a couple other level 7s that are played in this list, but I think Zwart Defeat is the best. It's got a great on-deletion effect. It can come out of security, obviously, but also just being able to delete tamers is going to be fairly important, especially versus decks where they don't play as many tamers. For example, in this list, we're only playing three TKs, so let's say you're playing a list like this. Your opponent only has one tamer out. You can go into Zwart and pop that, and they're going to lose that memory tamer value later, or you can pop things like Yuji and X Antibody, so they don't have that. Pop Davis Ken in Imperial and stuff like that, so I do like the Zwart Defeats. Now, 3 TK is interesting just because I feel like a lot of these lists tend to go towards the new BT8 Kari, but TK is obviously a fairly strong card. We do have a lot of yellow cards to grab out of here with the yellow purple. However, it is enough purple cards in the list to where it can be dangerous. Let's say you have like two security left, your opponent swings and hits TK, you search the one card in your stack, it's a purple card, you have to take it and you don't get to recover, so you essentially give your opponent a free security attack plus one, so that can happen um, just because there are let's see here 7 10 17 24 full purple cards um, so almost half the deck does not get hit by TK so it definitely can be a hindrance but TK is such a strong card that it definitely makes sense to play it still for memory boost this is just to search for the stuff that you need and being able to have extra memory is going to be great pairing this with reinforced memory boost is going to give you a lot of things to your hand while also being able to just extend your turns because you're going to need to be able to hard play these ultimates so these memory boosts are going to help with that three dead or alive is fairly clunky but since we are playing the three lusamon i do like it obviously you can play out other things and uh you probably will at some times but since we do have a higher Lucimon count, the Dead or Alive count is also going to make sense here. Three Flame Hell Scythe, this card is just absolutely insane. Playing this at three or four just makes sense to me. I think this card is very strong, as well as Chaos Degradate is also a very strong card. I think it's a little more clunky and a little more expensive, and sometimes can be not quite as crazy that as playing something out with 6k from your trash but this card is good i think i like it at two it's a fairly good ratio and then just the one reinforced memory boost that's all we could play so it does make sense and i am a big fan all right getting on into the next list we are going to keep going with the card market regional list so starting off we have the four demi marimon and the one Xiaomon. i think the Xiaomon is interesting it's probably one of the weaker rookies that you could play i think i like things like the starter deck niaramon a little bit better but Xiaomon's retaliation can be nice um, you can put it like a Psychmon on top and be able to swing into one of your opponent's Megas and get pretty good value, but I don't think it's one of the craziest eggs, but we do see it played here as one. Getting into the rookies, we see a different rookie lineup. Instead of going for draw, we are just going for a 4-4 four and four Floodgate here, which I do like personally. Um, I was playing something very similar to this, so I do respect it. I don't think Psychmon hits the craziest amount of things in the format right now, but it can hit enough to where it's going to be valuable. Then again, we are just having the five champions here, four Gatamon, one Black Gatamon, so this seems to be what people were playing this weekend. Um, again, we are having the same ultimate lineup except now we are going to be having one of the starter deck lady devimon here but again with the three lucimon chaos mode i like i said personally i think that's a little much and a little clunky but i would have to test it to see how the hands feel but with two of these lists topping with three it's obviously got to be doing work and i mean it is a 12k security check so that can trade into a lot of things so um having this in security is probably not the worst the one Lady Devimon is interesting here. It does give you a little bit of search and then gives you a bunch of retaliation for your yellow Digimon, but I think that playing it at a lower count if you are going to play it is better. I do like most of these other ultimates a little bit more, but I do like this tech here. It is an interesting card. It is a nice searcher as well, and it's another ultimate that only costs six that you can hard play, um, and six a lot of times is going to be a lot better than dropping seven or eight. If you, let's say you have a memory tamer, you're at three, your opponent it's going to go to three with their memory tamer anyway then playing six perfectly fills that out now here we got the four mastamon once again and now we're going with the one ofani mode this is something that i expected to be in like pretty much every single list but that's definitely not the case here just playing it at one here i still think ofani mon is a fairly strong card but people must be just kind of shying away from it a little bit here and then with the level sevens we're going with four here three defeats which we already kind of talked about here i do like it but the one x antibody is pretty interesting because you're gonna have to put that on top of the omnimon here and this is just one of those cards where it's been around since 
since it's been released. It's been splashed into some decks that have been, seen some success, but I still don't think X Antibody Omnimon is the craziest card. It is nice, but it can be clunky if you don't have an Omnimon out and it's in your hand. It is obviously going to be a little bit dead, but if you do get a free one out of security, then this is going to be a perfect card to pair with it, and you're going to be able to have some great um, offensive presence with a 15k that can go and delete stuff. So I think it's okay. Um, I don't know if I would play it myself, but we did see him here be able to uh, splash it in. Like I said, this is a card that will probably be splashed in decks that plays War Defeat for maybe forever. Um, we will have to see, but it is a splashable card that does sometimes see success. And then going into Memory Tamers, we're going with the two TK and one Kari. Again, still surprised that we're not seeing three or four Kari's in these lists. People still going for the TK here. Um, I think you have less targets to hit it than the last list that we went with. But either way, TK is still a strong card. Being able to grab out things like Flame Hellscythe if you want it or Chaos Degregate to be able to clear things is nice. But obviously, you do want to get your Godomon out of security. So I think that's kind of the main thing that you're looking for. TK here, Godomon or the Mastamon search. So um, it's going to be a nice consistency card. But I think the Kari is nice. There is just a lot of recovery with this list, especially with we got like the Ophanimon here. And so a um, little bit lower of a count here, but I do like this card. I expect that when these decks stabilize, that this will be a little bit higher going all four here with the flame hell scythe so just going all the way in there this card is very strong so i i like it um i think flames hell scythe is one of the stronger cards in the list considering the ultimate lineup that we have here so i uh, do like this at four and then another four yellow purple memory boost here no reinforcing memory boost in this list but still going with the four here which again is going to be nice you can get that extra memory to be able to uh, make it so you give your opponent a reasonable amount of memory when hard dropping your ultimates or you can go into rush with black gatomon so it is a nice card and then three chaos degradation here i think that's a little bit higher than the other list uh, which was playing it at two i did like it at two but playing it at three it's one of those things where it looks like they cut the reinforcing memory boost to fit this in um i don't know which one's going to necessarily be better one's kind of a defensive searcher card as to where one is a little bit more of an like a aggressive defense if you will but i think it's fine here at three or two uh three does feel a little bit heavier here but did work out just an interesting choice to not play the reinforcing memory boost considering how strong it is in this list and how much it helps you with the memory going in but uh, going on into the next list now all right last list from the card market regionals that we're going to be going over here and this one has got a lot of interesting things compared to the other list starting off we do have the four niaramon no demi maramon here so a completely different egg switch um this is going to be another popular egg choice in these lists probably the second most behind the demi maramon so we will see this a little bit more consistently but looking at the rookies, we got the four Candlemon, four Salomon, and two Armadillomon. So we're actually going with the yellow base here. Obviously, these two can Digivolve on top of purple Digitama, so you don't have to play a yellow uh, Digitama here. But the Ar Armadillomon is a card that is really interesting for me to play um it obviously can search out your digimon here and you want to be able to find your gatomons and whatnot but i haven't really seen armadillomon played in any other list besides this one so it's a definitely an interesting tech the champion lineup is also a bit different here. We were just seeing the four Gatamon, one black Gatamon, but here we're going with three of the Wizardmon. This is just kind of saying that they are planning to build up more than hard play because you're going to be able to Digivolve for two into this champion, be able to go up into your ultimates, but uh, no inheritables. It's just a vanilla, so we're just looking to get up into our ultimates with this card. Now, the ultimate lineup is also very different because instead of having four Magna, four Lady Devi, we're playing three of each two of the Angemon once again. We're bumping up to two of the starter deck Lady Devimon here and only playing the one Chaos mode. So down to a lower Chaos mode count, down on the Magna and Lady Devimon counts, and a little bit up in the uh, Lady Devimon count from the new starter deck, but you do have to make room if you're going to be able to play these extra rookies as well as these extra champions compared to the other lists. So looks like they went ahead and cut down on some of the ultimates and have a little bit different of an ultimate lineup as far as just the counts per um, from what we've seen before and what we're going to see from a lot of the other lists. But I do like the chaos mode at a little at less than three. Personally, I don't know if I like one. I'm still at two, but um, this is going to be an interesting list. I would have to test this out just because I don't know how powerful the Candlemon, the Salomon are going to really be, as well as the addition of the Wizardmon, how much that will help the deck out. So this is something I have to te test out myself, but up 
to the ultimates from the rookies to the ultimate this is a very very different list um something that is just completely different from anything i've played or tested myself so this is going to be something that you might have to play a different kind of play style just because it looks like they're going to be playing a little bit more of a buildy game instead of hard playing things and giving you memory they're going to be digivolving up and drawing and whatnot now we got four Masty and two Ophanimon here. Uh, the Ophanimon count going up, like I said, I thought most of the list were gonna be playing two or three of this, so this is kind of what I expected. Um, so this is what I thought would be standard. I don't think it really is, but it is nice to see the Ophanimon. I think it is a good card in this list, especially with the Karis here. Um, three Zwart defeats, so seems to be the most common level seven. Again, it does work fairly well in the metagame and the security threat of it is pretty huge. We do got the Kari here, so like I said, I did think this this is one of the better tamers. Looks like this player did agree with that, going with the three Karis. So that's going to be able to give you a lot of memory, extend your plays. You are going to be recovering a decent amount, and especially now that we are up in the Ophanimon count, and we are playing the Reinforcing Memory Boost. So do like this here. Another list playing four Flame Hell Scythe. I do agree. Once again, I think it's very strong. But now we're going to see two Purple Memory Boost. Still with the one Reinforcing Memory Boost. But a little bit lower on the Purple Memory Boost from what we've seen from the other list. So um, I think this is fine. I think anywhere from two to four is fine as long as you're playing the Reinforcing Memory Boost as well. But the Purple Memory Boost is going to be able to search you out just so many key cards in your list. Um, namely your Megas and your Gatomons. But... This does give you the option to have Wizard Mon now that you can grab, or maybe Lady Devi, but um, it is a little bit lower on the count, but I don't think it's going to change too much. And then ending with the two Chaos Degregation here, I think this is where it should be. Um, it is a very strong card, but it can be a little clunky unless it is in your security, of course. So do agree with the two, and as we saw, you did have to cut some things from the other list to be able to fit in some of the other cards here. All right, this next list here looks like it got second place a few days ago in Spain. So starting off with the four Niaromon here again. Some of these lists are going to play in the Niaromon. Some are going to be playing the Demi Marimon. It looks to be very um, player preference here because there's a pretty even split between them from what we've seen so far in the spreadsheet. I imagine that the Demi Marimons are going to be a bit better, but we will have to see. Very interesting here, no rookies. We do have the Niaramon as a purple source, but we aren't actually playing any rookies. So uh, the egg actually doesn't even matter because we're just going straight into the Gatomon here for, of course, we are playing the Witchmon, which is a very interesting card. I don't know how much you really need the security to come out from the effect, but um, you are gonna be able to add some cards to your hand. So it does help. Um, I think hard playing this is not going to be the greatest but um for six for a champion but it is one of those things where if it does come out of security you are going to be able to digivolve up and then potentially a dna digivolve so i think that this is interesting out as far as security digimon i don't think it's one of the weakest but i don't think it's one of the most effective either so the witchmon is very interesting tech for me here then we're going to be having the promo Gatamon here as a one of. This is a card that I was saying all the time. I'm very surprised that this isn't being played in Mastamon. It just makes sense to me, kind of. Um, and as a one of, being able to have blocker and recover is going to be nice. It is obviously a little expensive for a champion, but it's one of those champions where hard playing it is going to be fine because you're going to be able to have a blocker, recover, DNA Digivolve or Digivolve up and then go into a DNA Digivolve and whatnot. So um, I think that's the first list that I've seen that's top that's actually played it. And that's a card that I've been looking forward to. Now going into the ultimates here, we're going with the four Lady Devi, the four Magna Angemon, and then just two Lusamon, two Angelomon. Um, a little bit smaller of an ultimate lineup, I do believe, compared to some of the other ones, but it is going to be effective being able to play four and four of your two best level fives, and then being able to play the Angel Mon, so you have another thing to hard play, while also being able to essentially just, um, give security attack minus two and slow things down, and then the two chaos mode, which, like I've said a couple times now, that's where I like it. All right, with the Megas, we have two Plutomon, which is a very interesting card. Obviously, it's going to be able to work with, uh, what, Flame Hellsythe? Underworld's Call and Violet Memory Boost or Purple Memory Boost, but I think this is a very interesting choice. I think this was somebody just trying to get fancy with it. I don't know if I think that this is a card strong enough to actually be a staple in the list. I think it's interesting. It's not something that I considered myself, um, so it is interesting to see it be played and actually perform. Um, I will have to see more testing and see if this actually picks up, but I think this is kind of cool more so than I think it's powerful. 
And then four Mastamon, pretty standard. And then the Omnimon, we're going up to four here. A lot of lists we're seeing two or three. Just going four maxed here, which can be good, but it can also be bad because a couple of these in your hand can be fairly clunky. Um, this is one of those decks already where things are costing a lot. Since we don't have rookies, we're not really digivolving up. We are hard playing a lot. So having things that might be a clunk in your hand for three, four, five turns could be pretty bad. But we are playing the four Mastamon and the two Plutamon, so you do have the all the sources that you can to digivolve them all on top. And at four, you technically are going to have the highest consistency of seeing them in security. But uh, I like two or three here. Four Zord defeats, and every deck that I played four Zord defeats has always just been a little bit too much. Now going with the Tamers, we're going with the four Mimi and four Kari. So the Mimi is also interesting because we haven't seen this yet. Um, being able to play your options for cheaper or be able to gain memory on your opponent's turn is something that. I didn't really consider to be needed in this list. They did identify wanting it there, maxing it out all the way to four. So um, this is a card that I think can be helpful if we look at the option lineup here. Being able to have two or three Mimis out to make these things cheaper is going to be nice. Or if you're playing against somebody who's also playing option cards, it can slow them down. Even if you're playing against like Imperial, having two of these out is going to completely negate any Hammer Spark or anything like that. So um, I think it is an interesting card. Four of is quite a lot. But there is the four Kari, which I think is is correct in my opinion i don't know i'm still just a big fan of kari back to the four purple memory boost and the one reinforcing so this has been a little bit more standard than doing anything else and i do like it there is a lot of search i think you're going to need these in this list more so than any of the other lists because of the missing rookies so i do dig this here Underworld's Call is very interesting. Being able to play out Gatomon or Witchmon, I guess, is cool. You're mostly just looking to replay Gatomon here. So I think it's interesting being able to play replay your Gatomon. I am a fan of it. I haven't really seen Underworld's Call here, but since there's so much extra room in this list without the rookies and a little bit lighter ultimate count, um, you do have room to play stuff like this. So just getting highest consistency of being able to get Gatomon as much as possible. So as much as I think this card is um, cool, I, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's I think it's probably actually pretty decent now that I think about it. Um, I'd have to test versus it, but the fact that you can get this effect off the security is going to be pretty huge. So I actually do like this now thinking about it. Two dead or alive. We are playing the two chaos modes, and so it's a good card to go with it. Uh, the only thing else you're playing here is the Lady Debbie. So not the biggest outlets to be able to hit this. So maybe you would want to cut this down to one. But anytime you're playing the Lusamon, being able to play these are going to be super strong because being able to play it for eight to just pop anything is going to be nice. Four Flame Hell Scythe once again. And then, of course, the one reinforcing memory boost. So this list was way different from any of the other lists. And that's why I liked it so much. All right, the last list we're going to be looking at is a first place from Japan. So we got four Demimera and one of the newer Demimera. I don't think this new Demimera is as good. Um, I don't know if you necessarily need to play it, but if they want the fifth egg, that's fine. I think the Niaromon as the fifth egg is going to be a little bit better, but I do see the new Demimera being used here. Rookie lineup, we're back to the four Tapirmon and the three Gazimon. So getting some draw here and, of course, having the Floodgates. But then, interestingly enough, we have a Lekmon here. So Lekmon, a card that can be fairly good, especially with Demi Marimon. You can Digivolve up. You can go ahead and swing. You get two on deletion effects, being able to get draw, discard, as well as being able to delete a level three or lower. So I've been a big fan of a Lekmon. Played it in purple in the last format, but haven't really seen it in this deck. So that is something that's a little bit uh, newer for me. But I do see the value of it. There are some fairly strong levels level threes or just even being able to just trade a level three and then being able to uh, delete the other level three with an on deletion can be fairly strong so i'm a big fan Four Gatomon, Staple, two Wizardmon, so they are also trying to build up here, and then just one Witchmon, so the one Witchmon is going to be tech if you're just playing it at one the consistency of you hitting it out of security is going to be fairly low if you ever really do hit it out of security obviously if you play enough games you are going to hit it out but as one that's not going to happen as much so we're looking here for the on play or just another way to build up alongside the wizardmon here and no black atomon in this list ultimates we do have the four magna angemon cut down to three lady devimon but we did go up to two neo devi so we have neo devis in this list tamers are obviously going to be very strong in this list versus or in this metagame versus things like rapidmon even imperial even in the mirror match the neo devi is going to be fairly strong so this is um, a pretty interesting tech i don't think i've really seen it in a lot of the other lists but being able to have the memory gain when your opponent plays tamers is going to change a lot of their plays obviously will be negated off of things like memory uh memory blockers but I don't think that's going to be as popular as in previous formats, so I think Neo Devi does fit here, and then finishing it off with the two Angelomon, which also seems fairly staple. Now, I know we all see it, 
there is a creepy mon in this list i don't really know the purpose of the creepy mon here but they did play it did work out i think it's very interesting i don't expect this to be something that is picked up at all or i mean some people might test it but i don't think it's going to get into the mainstream of the list but this is a very interesting tech um i don't think it really progresses your game plan too much but it could be nice in the uh, matchup versus some of the slower decks to try and get a deck out going but uh just an interesting tech not the biggest fan but i do see how it could potentially be useful only three mastamon here probably to try and fit room for the creepy mon here and then two of the ofani mons so i do like uh the ofani mons obviously it's just the creepy mon here is going to be a little bit different and something that we probably don't see as much but if this is something you want to test go for it because it obviously worked here in this japan tournament three Zort defeats here again fairly standard and then moving on to the tamers we have the two kari and then one cody so two memory tamers and then the one cody um you are going to be able to get the memory off of this so that is nice and then you will be able to get the effect to swinging with a dual color so it is nice at one it is just a little tech so you're not going to see it that consistently um and i'm a little surprised to see a lower memory tamer count but um I, cody is such a strong card that it makes sense to play it in anything that you're playing dual colors with yellow so you're gonna be able to get extra memory you're gonna be able to get dp reduction all that it will be nice but this is a little bit lighter of a tamer count now we got two purple memory boost here and no reinforcing memory boost so much lower on the memory boost count i don't like that as much playing the two without playing the reinforce feels not as good to me just because I feel like you need that extra memory to make plays in this list without just passing your turn every single time. Um, so this is a little bit low for me without the reinforcing. Three chaos degradation, gonna be nice. Um, gonna be able to be consistent there. I still like the two, but the three has been consistent enough. And the four, four flame hell scythe. And then at the end here, we did have um, the other level six here, which is gonna be the war Greymon. So we are playing the three Mastamon, the two Ophanimon, the one Creepymon, and the one yellow war Greymon. I think yellow war Greymon is cool. It's going to be able to give you a little bit extra aggression. You're gonna be able to add a security card to your hand, which isn't gonna be that big of a deal because you're gonna be able to recover things back up anyway. So being able to just get an extra resource to your hand is gonna be pretty nice but this is again something very interesting playing the war Greymon and the creepy mon two things that we don't really see and seeing them in the same list to do some success is um pretty cool i think it's something that i think war Greymon would pick up way before creepy mon would but i don't really see either of them becoming staples of the deck all right, here we are at the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things in here. And of course, if you wanna go ahead and look at this and have this resource for yourself, be sure to just go ahead and check down the comments down below. But starting off here, we see that the most common egg here is gonna be the Demimera at eight of the decks playing it as a four count. And then the Niaromon playing five as a four count right behind it. Some of the decks from JP did not list the Digitama that they were playing. So um, we aren't gonna have all 15 decks here Digitama but I imagine they would likely be playing one of these two as the four of. Now looking here in the rookies, we can see that this is completely not solved. People are all over the place with the rookies here. Tapirmon, Gazimon, and the Psychmon are going to be the most consistent and popular cards with them all getting around half of the decks played or more. But now we have just a bunch of random two and one ofs that were played in these lists. So um, these ones around here are probably gonna be the more consistent options that have been tested more as to where if you go down here, these are gonna be kind of techs that people have tried and had success with, but I don't know how much um, I would really go for it. You can test them, but if you're looking to try to build a list that's been has the most testing with it these rookies are going to be a little bit more obviously this is all going to come down to personal preference and what you want from your deck but if you are looking at this and trying to figure out what rookies to go with i would look towards these top five or six here and then maybe consider testing these bottom ones but not go and put too much uh don't put all your eggs in the one basket with these ones here because they might be a little inconsistent now looking at the champions no surprise are here got them on all 15 decks played as a four of just the card that kind of puts everything together but outside of that we don't see any other champion being played out in more than just six of the 15 decks the black godamon and the wizardmon are up there the witchmon and the ogremon are right behind it but i don't know what you really go for here obviously play the four gatomons uh, the Black Gatomon was used a lot, and then the Wizardmon is there as a nice two color to be able to start digivolving up. Um, that's again going to be player preference, but we do have some random things like Scatter Mode was played. Scatter Mode is a strong card. I don't think it's just because one deck played it doesn't mean it's going to be bad just because it's a strong card. Promote is a pretty random card. 
um, as well as the Gatamon promo is a card that I thought was going to get played a lot more. We're only having two decks played at one, so as much as I thought this was going to be a very strong card, it turns out to maybe not be, or maybe it's just being slept on. We'll have to see. Once we get to the ultimates here, things start to get a little bit more consistent. We got Magna Andromon, Lady Devimon, and the starter deck 10 Andromon in 15 of the 15 decks. We got Lusamon in 14 of them. Um, so these are going to be your consistency ones. And then we have Neo Devi and Lady Devimon from the new starter deck that are splashed into some decks. But these five right, or these four right here seem to be the most consistent um, with Andromon, Lady Devi, and Magna Andromon being solidified as like guaranteed in the list. Big surprise, 15 of the 15 Mastamon decks are playing Mastamon, and then right behind it, we have 10 of the decks playing Ophanimon. So this is kind of what I expected here was Ophanimon to be second most popular and used in quite a bit of decks. I thought it was going to be closer to like 13, 14, 15 of the decks, but 10 of 15 is still quite a lot. So it's fairly consistent as to where down here, outside of the BT3 Mastamon, which was played as a one of in four decks, we just have one Plutomon, one Creepymon, and the one War Greymon, which we saw these two were one ofs in the same deck. So um, these are not going to be as consistent as to where if you're looking at Megas, um, you could consider the Mastamon here, but you're looking mostly at Ophanimon and Mastamon. 11 decks here playing a Zwart Defeat. Most common count is going to be at three. We did have the one at four and then a few at uh, two here, but three Zwart Defeats is going to be the most common number as well as being the most popular level seven. We did have one X Antibody list and two lists with Millennium on, which eh, Millennium on's not really doing it for me. If I'm going to be completely honest, uh, neither of these really are, but I do like Zwart Defeat. Tamers, there was a lot less Tamers than I was really expecting to see here. We did see the Kari Kamiya from the BT-8 go into 13 of 15 list, which is what was kind of my original expectation here. I just think this card is so strong. Um, at the beginning, not seeing a couple lists really play it. Um, so the highest count was at three, but like two and one were kind of there. A couple lists at four, but yeah, Kari is very strong. Um, we did see a few lists playing TK. The highest count was as a two of with three decks playing it at two, two decks playing it at one, and the one deck playing it at three. But uh, like I said before, TK can be dangerous. The fact that you can swing last check um, look at your last card and security. It's a purple card. You have to take it. Now you have no security. So TK can hurt you. And then if we look at these tamers, we have a lot of randomness outside of these three TK cars here, which were all played as a two of, we just have one of Kari from BT four, BT three Mimi, one analog youth, one Matt, one Cody, um, just a bunch of random one ofs. I think all of these tamers are fine tamers to play, but they were only played in one deck, meaning that they aren't as consistent, um, which can be a good thing sometimes having cards that are not popular in the matchup can help like sometimes you can catch your opponent off guard with these Karis or these Mimis or maybe the analog is going to give you that search and that extra memory and hatching that you need later but uh, for the most part these are looking to be your main tamers with some splashes of TK Kari. Now going into the option cards, Flame Hell Scythe, most popular 14 decks. Surprised this isn't 15 out of 15. I'm going to be completely honest. The card is super good. Chaos Degregation right behind it at 12 and then Reinforcing Memory Boost at 10. So these are very nice. And then of course we had the Purple Memory Boost, which was only played as a four of or a two of. No list with one or three, which is usually not as common, but um, highest count was going to be a two of here and then some list playing it at four. But these options here are kind of going to be the ones that are more consistent. We did see a lot of Dead or Alive as well. Um, some three playing it at three, three playing it at one. So these were both tied for highest count. Um, I think three Dead or Alive is going to be a lot. I'm not going to be honest. I did mention that before. But uh, somewhere in this range is what you're looking for Dead or Alive if you're going to play it. Then with these options down here, Underworld's Call, Calling from the Darkness, Tactical Retreat, and Holy Wave, they are not used as much, just little techs. Um, I do think Underworld's Call is cute. Uh, I think Tactical Retreat is good. I don't think Calling from the Darkness or Holy Wave are going to be really that useful. In fact, I think Holy Wave is just kind of bad. Six Memory to Recover one in a deck like this is just not going to really do it. Obviously, if you hit it in security, it's great. It's going to recover, but I, I'm not the biggest fan of Holy Wave. All right, that's going to be it for today's video. If you're interested in getting the spreadsheet as well as the list of all the decks that I went over, they are going to be pinned in the comment down below. So be sure to go check that out. And if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what other decks you would like me to go over in the BT8 metagame to start breaking down like this and see where the metagame is looking at, what decks are going to be a little more solved, which decks are going to be less solved like this one that we have here. But with that being said, I will catch you all next time. I hope you have a fantastic day. Peace out.